Greetings and welcome to Healthy Heart at Dr. Shankar Surgery. The aortic purse string has been placed in the front of the ascending aorta with the aid of a pair of artery forceps to help draw the aorta downwards. An occluding side biting clamp has been placed across the base of the right atrial appendage. The appendage is opened and its insides cleared of any obstructions. Then the opening is encircled with the right atrial purse string. Once the purse string is completed, both lengths of the suture are equalized, the needles trimmed off and the suture drawn through a snugger. With the snugger down tight, the clamp is released and preparations are made to cannulate the patient for cardiopulmonary bypass. We pause here briefly to note the left anterior descending artery. Then we note the course of the left ventricular diverticulum. The left anterior descending artery sits on top of the interventricular septum. Above it in the picture is therefore the patient's left ventricle and extending to the right of the picture towards the patient's feet, just under the skin, is the left ventricular diverticulum. Below the left anterior descending artery in the picture are the pulsations of the patient's right ventricle and right ventricular outflow tract. Of note is the abnormal course of the left anterior descending artery, roughly from top left down to the bottom right in this picture. Off screen, the cardiopulmonary bypass pump has been running for a few minutes to the air. The pump is stopped, the lines are clamped, and then divided between the clamps. A pair of fine artery forceps applied to the tissues of the front of the aorta help to steady the vessel while it is being cannulated. A small incision is then made inside the aortic purse string a sharp number 11 knife. The aortic cannula is then inserted with its spout facing the patient's feet before being rotated so its spout faces the other way. The cannula is given to the assistant to hold while the surgeon snares down. Then the assistant is given both the cannula and the snare to hold while they are tied together to secure the cannulation site. Off screen to the left of the picture, the cannula is then de-aired and connected to the arterial limb of the cardiopulmonary bypass circuit. It is then secured to the top corner of the wound with the braided silk suture. The remainder of the arterial limb of the circuit is similarly secured to the surgical drapes to prevent kinking. The side biting clamp is placed once more in its old position across the base of the right atrial appendage. The purse string is released and the tip of the cannula is gently placed through the right atrial appendage opening as the clamp is released. The purse string is snared down over the end of the cannula and then the cannula and the snugger are tied together. Off screen to the right, the cannula is connected to the venous limb of the cardiopulmonary bypass circuit, the clamps removed and cardiopulmonary bypass is commenced.